Hey there, welcome to Concept Hunter. Today's game is called About Face. Let's hit play and see the warning. This game contains bright flashing patterns which may have the potential to induce seizures for people with photosensitive epilepsy. Viewer discretion is advised. Click anywhere to continue. When I see this type of warning, I'm usually kind of unhappy because it means that there are unnecessary, annoying, painful color flashes that are just there in bad taste for some kind of random flashy animation or whatever it is. I'm scared that that's just going to happen and, and, and not be great. And in this game, it's totally fine. I am totally fine with this. It does happen, not to a huge extent, but it has a really good reason. The art style and what it does and what the game tries to do, this is, this is okay. This is totally okay and we're going to see exactly why in a second. So before we go in, we're just going to click the credits. It's by Patrick McGrath. It's called Peltus Design, the, the Newgrounds username, and we're going to go into a new game. Have you ever seen a platformer where you move left and right with the A and D keys or the left and right arrow keys? That's... it's a platformer. Uh, I can leave her by hitting the spacebar, and this is actually the biggest caveat that I have. You've heard this before if you've ever seen Concept Hunter on, with a, on, on a platformer. Uh, the up arrow key and the W key don't do anything, and my question is why? There's no really a good reason. I enjoy playing with just one hand because it's more comfortable for me to use the up arrow key than to use the space and be forced to use two hands. That's just me. Some other people enjoy using both hands, but there's no reason not to allow the upper key or the W key to also jump. So just enable them to jump. And in this game specifically, it irks me more because jumping is the main thing you do in this game. You'll see that in a second. There are no other buttons other than left and right and, and jumping. So please, please allow the upper key and the W key. Thank you very much. Let's move on. That's it. I'm done. I'm done saying it. I always say that I'm done. Said my piece. I have to be careful about of, of dangerous obstacles. Wow, have you ever seen a platformer before? There are spikes, and when you die, you instantly respawn. Fantastic, very good job. Instant respawn. Very, very important in this type of game. Really, I can't stress enough how happy that you have instant respawn. Uh, I can remember my progress here. That's a checkpoint, it's an eye, it opens up. Fantastic, let's move on. There's a lot of foreshadowing here that there's another realm with things we can't interact with. Well, guess what's going to happen now? I'm gonna pick up a thing. Guess what it's going to do? Nothing. Oh wait, I jumped. I ruined that. That was too that was too fast. I totally ruined that. When you jump, the realm switches. And this is something that you've seen before. This is a mechanic, realm switching or or world switching, whatever you want to call it. Switching. It's a mechanic that you've seen before, but I don't think I've ever seen it tied to the jump mechanic. And this is where this game is kind of unique and brings out a lot of really, really cool stuff. It's tied to the jumping mechanic. When you jump, you have to switch realms. You can't not. And that creates a, a, a pretty unique level design and way of thinking and way of movement that we'll see as we, as we progress through it. Now, usually what happens is that you have like a portal over here. When you jump through the portal, the realm switches, or you have another button that isn't the jump button. But, th and that's why this is so different that I don't think I've seen it before. Uh, we also have on top of that a little bit of a story, you know, the happy face and the sad face. Hello, I see you're on an adventure. How exciting. You've already learned to change yourself as I have. And the sad face then says, who are you? Go away and leave me alone because he's sad. This guy's happy. Good luck. I'm sure we'll meet again soon. It doesn't hinder me. Some people like it. I don't really care for it. But as long as it's not intrusive and annoying and it isn't here, that's pretty good. So I'm, I'm happy about that. And already we can see what we talked about earlier, um, that the realm switching, sometimes there's a problem with contrasting, and here we have no problem with contrasting. You know exactly what's going to pop into existence and what's going to pop out. And that's kind of the flashing images because the background as well changes from white to black, but it's fine. It works well and it really helps the contrast. It doesn't hurt my eyes too much. I'm sure there are people that it, it will, but for me, it works out pretty well. And one of the cool things about jumping and switching mechanic instantly, it forces you to move as well as changing your environment. So because it does both of those things, changing the environment and forcing you to move, you have cool situations like this. I'm one pixel away from touching those spikes, but when I, when I jump and, and switch, the switch will happen before. I mean, it's seamless for the player, but it'll actually happen before, so I will jump upwards and won't get hit by the spikes. And this is a really cool way of thinking that creates some really, really cool level design later on. And you have you have both types of level design here. Um, in terms of platformers, you, have, you generally have execution and precision, so you know what you need to do. You just have to do it properly, which is difficult. Or you have a puzzle where you just have to figure out how do I, how the hell do I get through this? And there are both of both types of levels in this game, and both of them are quite fantastic. So here we, we were introduced to these things. This is not 
Uh, this is also another cool thing they do with level design. In this level, this is kind of a puzzle. We don't have to be fast, but we are introduced to the thing that makes us go fast in later levels, these saw blades, which are on the rails and they always want to be in our level um, because they want to hit us. So this is a puzzle. I just have to jump here and that's fine. This is another precision, precision thing. And this is another puzzle that, that's just more foreshadowing for later when we'll get speed levels where we have to be fast. Some otherwise simple challenges are now complicated. This is one of the first puzzles that really just a little bit, okay, what do I exactly need to do? So here a lot of people just jump and then you'll fall down because you get immediately stuck in the platform. And note how you have a tiny bit of hang. So even if I'm immediately hit by something, I do hang just for a little bit to allow me to see what happens. And then the insane level of gravity, look at the gravity, the gravity is, the gravity is actually very, very fast. Um, it actually isn't fast in this case, but it is fast if you just fall down, which I could do here, just fall down, you fall very, very quickly but it lets you hang if you jump and that's actually very very good use of, of of the jumping mechanic it's very good specific case because it allows you to see what the problem was and allows you to much more comfort with the movement uh, i really like that so here we have to make those jumps it's another puzzle level we have to jump back and forth just by tiny small increments and here we're introduced to another mechanic it's not really another mechanic, it just explains one of the older mechanics and, and gives us a new use for it. And it's done purely by the level design. The fact is that the jump that I have, I don't have to start on the platform. So I can actually fall and then do the jump in midair. And I have to do it here in order to get through those. It's only introduced to level design. Nobody told me that. They do have a little bit of back and forth, back and forth. So they do tell you a little bit of what to do sometimes. But in this case, it's just level design. It's the only possible way to get past here. And it's done pretty, pretty damn well. Um, the level design also creates really, really tight spaces like you can see here, which is a little bit of a puzzle of where exactly do I need to jump. And if you are inside something that will, will come into existence, you're just, you're just pushed away, which is totally fine. Um, and I screwed up on the last jump. All right, there you go. So then there's a little bit of every, there's a lull every couple of levels with a little bit of story which is the, the correct spot to put story, not after every level, but just after a lull, after something difficult maybe, or, or, or something like that. Very well done. And there's really not much, there's nothing bad for me to say. You got the instant respawn, aside from the, the, uh, the controls, pretty much everything that you want out of a platformer is here. And this, for example, is a speed level. I have to do things pretty quickly. Otherwise the spikes will come in and I, I managed just fine. This is another good example of being fast here that we have to jump and we're, we're totally fine. And I think that's enough, I can stop. So in terms of the game, it's not very long. It's actually exactly the amount of time that it needs to be. There isn't a ton of progression. Uh, mainly the, the only thing that gets added later on is the fact you have another jump, which again, the jump jumps always switch. You just have a double jump and they really utilize, which, which actually opens up the level design quite a lot. They really utilize every single thing that they can and they create very interesting platformer levels with this unique mechanic. And it's, I really enjoyed it. I played it through and I think every level is fantastic. It's called About Face once again by Peltus Design, which is Patrick McGrath. And that's it for Concept Hunter. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.